So good afternoon, everyone. Um, we have. Uh, I'm gonna get started. There are a uh, few things going on. Uh, and right now, I'm sort of in picture. We have team search presentation to the faculty. That's why I don't see many faculty around here right now. Uh, we have also well, there are a couple of events going on as usual. Yeah, it's good of architecture, too many offers, right? Too many opportunities. It's great, it's great to have that. So uh, I have the pleasure to introduce to you uh, Camila Mileto and Fernando Vegas, who are coming from um, Valencia in Spain. Uh, uh, I have had the opportunity to uh, know Camila and Fernando for a number of years. And when I found out that they were going to be here in San Antonio delivering a keynote lecture for the Association for Preservation Technology International Conference, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to steal one more day from their time and bring them over to, to our school. The reason I, I wanted to do this is because Camila and Fernando are were very well known in the, in the field of historic preservation, uh, especially in, in Spanish-speaking countries, uh, Latin America and, and, and also uh, Europe and also the United States. Uh, uh, and, uh, they don't not only do historic preservation, they both are architects, so they also do uh, design work. So I thought it was a great opportunity having them here, just next door, and uh, it would have been a shame not to have them here. So they graciously accepted to come here. Uh, they have to take a plane today at 6 p.m. going back to Spain. So um, it's, uh, it was really, it's really, really a, a, a privilege to have them here. Uh, just, just to give you some uh, information about Camila and Fernando, they mentioned they are architects and professors <coughs> at the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. Um, they teach architectural composition and conservation both for graduates, undergraduates, and uh, postgraduate uh, post uh, courses. They have been guest lecturers here at the University of Venice, Palermo in Italy, Cordova in Argentina, University of Pennsylvania here in the United States, and uh, had been giving lectures, as I mentioned, many universities and forums all over the world. They have received several international awards for their research, new projects, and build work on architectural conservation. One of those awards are, is the European Union Prize in 2004 and 2011, the Europa Nostra Awards, which are also very prestigious awards on preservation in 2008 and 2013, and the Domus Award in 2012, among others. So with further, without further ado, I would like to help me to welcome Fernando and Camila. Thank you, Ben. <coughs> Thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, we're glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we are very glad to, to share I will work with you. We're speaking, we're, I'm going to give you the menu, uh, sorry, some of you are eating, so we're speaking about the menu uh, that we have for today. We are speaking, we're going to speak in our, our concept on, in sustainability applied both to historic preservation and to new architecture, design new architecture. There's a, a, a kind of uh, saying uh, in Europe, uh, I think there's not here, it's called like zero kilometer or mile zero uh, restaurant or mile zero architecture. I think you are not familiar with that. It would be like a farm to market restaurant, okay? Mm -hmm. This is farm to market architecture. That means if I am going to make a new building, let's see what do I have around local materials, local knowledge, local craft, and build with that. Not to import from far, far away because import from far away uh, maybe impoverishes uh, architecture, and uh, and also we are giving more, we are producing more carbon footprint because of the transport, the production. Let's try to learn from the wisdom of the past of the traditional architecture, local architecture, and transfer it into modern architecture. This is the concept that we are 
would be something similar like transition towns. You know, transition towns, the English movement is also something similar. They try to be think local, to eat local. Uh, they, for example, uh, they're funny because they say, we are in England, we export like 500 tons of potatoes to Germany every year, and Germany export to England 500 <coughs> potatoes back to, why, why are we producing that? It's absurd. Why don't we exchange recipes? And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the concept. Of just to think local and try to be sustainable at that way. Okay? So we're trying to show you some examples of our work on, on that line. So, uh, dealing with this concept, we are starting from what is traditional architecture or vernacular architecture. That is the architecture that growing up directly from the surroundings, so from the land, the stone, and the materials that you can take from the landscape. So, in this case, you can see this village that is completely constructed with the same materials that you can find in, in the same mountains where it is constructed. So it, nowadays it seems very uh, something that we appraise very much, uh, appreciate very much, that is the integration between the architecture and, and the surroundings. But it's obvious when you use the same materials, so it's something very direct, it's not, nothing, not, not theory, it's something that is obvious. So also it's very important the relationship not only in materials way but with the nature, with the climate and with all what is the surrounding culture, nature, climate and so on. Uh, also with the use of land during um, many years we or during the, the, the 20th century we little by little, little um, lost the, the traditional use of the land in, in our countries, where, uh, for example, in, in the past, the village was was constructed in, in the mountains to use the land, the fertile lands, for agriculture. And nowadays, the new buildings, they, they constructed the new building little by little, invade, invading the, the agricultural land. So it's something that we have to think about again and try to understand which is the lens lesson that we can keep from this traditional use of the land. So these are more examples using the same materials from the, the same place. And you see that the integration is obviously complete because it's the same material. Uh, also the traditional or vernacular architecture is an architecture that the people it construct directly, so it is the same people that live in the architecture, they, they feel the architecture, and they care about the architecture, so they, they, they use the material, they build the building, and they care for the, the life of the building. And this is one example that is very well known, that is the, the, the mosque of Gene in Mali, and every year they make the, the, the the renewal of the, the plaster of the mosque to take care about the mosque. So it's a big, like a big fest or a big party for all the community and everybody participates to this movement and to, it's like a, a big uh, day for all the community. So uh, the, the traditional architecture used the materials from the, the landscape and there were people that were skilled, they had the skill to construct or to produce these materials. So it could be the same people that live there or some crafts specialized to, to construct with these, these materials. Now we, we lose, little by little, we were losing these craftsmen. And now we have a big problem, for example, in conservation, because we have to go to conserve or to preserve this architecture, and we don't know how to do it, because we lose the skill to do it. So it's very important to keep this knowledge and try to, uh, to have people that nowadays could maintain our traditional buildings. So in this line, or with this concept, 
in general of vernacular architecture and especially what we can learn from the vernacular architecture. We had the chance some years ago to work in a European project with other European universities about these concepts. And we produce like this, this wheel with different points that were important for us. Uh, the principles of these sustainable or lessons, sustainable lessons from vernacular architecture. So for example, we have like three big families about environment, social, cultural, and social economic principles. And we can see some of them, not all, because there are many, but some of them, for example, to respect the nature, that is something that we lose during the 20th century, and we, we need to recover this idea and to try to, to live in, uh, in more uh, relation with nature. Uh, and that means also to put the building in the right place not against nature, but to try to keep from the nature what we, we need, for example, ventilation, and use it in the right way, not put exactly the building in the wrong way, but try to understand the nature and use it. Reduce, of course, the pollution and most material, reusing materials, or using the material local from the agriculture, for example, we can use the rest of the materials of the agriculture to build our buildings. Uh, trying to make buildings, make building more healthy. So for example, with crossing ventilation and to use the, the nature I was speaking before to, to, uh, to construct better buildings. Among the, the cultural principles or social cultural principles, for example, one of, oops, uh -oh. where is it I guess? Hmm? No? No, there, there ah, okay. So one of the most important is, for example, the, the conservation of the landscape with agriculture. So keeping landscape alive, not like a museum, but trying to, to keep it alive, that it's quite difficult nowadays. Try to transfer the construction culture, so learn from the, the construction, <coughs> traditional construction, and try to, to keep it alive. In economic principle, for example, support autonomy, that was this kilometer, or zero kilometers, or zero mile uh, uh, understanding, like to try to, to be more autonomy in the community and to produce materials and, and food and so on in the, in, the, in the community. Promote local activities like a circle. If you try to find the best product that you, you have locally, you can produce it, you can sell it, and you can live with this. Also, not only in the city, but also in the villages, that is a big problem nowadays. Uh, try to extend the building's lifetime. So thinking a building not with 10 years life or 20 years life, but we have to try to think a building like 1,000 year life or trying to, to do something like this. And of course to save sources, uh, energy and everything that we have. So we are speaking now about one experience that we had in a, in a little region near to Valencia, that is Ademu, and with 22 little villages, seven big vi villages and 22 little villages, and we were working there during 20 years. So this is the, this is Spain, this is Valencia is here, and this is the little region that is this one with these villages. So this is the, the, the use of the land, the traditional use of the land as I was speaking before, and in general the villages are in the mountains not to occupy the, the land. So using these traditional materials that I showed before, and we were there during 20 years making workshops with 
people there with students. Students came from everywhere, so not only from Spain, but from many countries. Also and the United States. Also United States, Japan, as you can see. So it, it, it was very important for the people there to see that people from abroad or from outside, they were there to see their architecture. Because in general, they say, ah, my architecture is poor, it's not important. And when you see somebody that is coming from abroad, drawing and studying your architecture, you say, why? Why you are interested in that? <laughs> because it's very interesting and you can try to to let the people take conscience of their heritage. And that's very and they important. They say, it is old and dusty. And we say, no, it is ancient. I have patina. <laughs> <laughs> so we work in the technology, the traditional technology. And we publish this book that is like archaeological now, because it's 20 years ago. <laughs> so <it's laughs> and uh, another book that was Homo Faber that we publish not only with traditional architecture, but it, the, the production uh, related with the architecture. So we study also all the production uh, related with these buildings. So how they made things inside the buildings, not only the building. And then the landscape and the, the transformation we had. Nowadays, that people there didn't understand or don't understand so much their own heritage, and they tried to change it because they, they had the model of cities and different models. And so, uh, for example, this is the, the situation nowadays, but the, 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 the tendency is to paint everything with white that is not in this, not from this landscape. So they changed the image of this architecture, of things like that, where we have the village nowadays, and everybody is building like one room more, one part more of the building, and it's quite freely. They don't use very much project and permits in these cases. <laughs> so they are like, wow, I'm doing that and that, and we could arrive to this. This is Photoshop. It's a simulation. It's not the reality, but we could. Oh, we could arrive to something like this. So uh, we try to find a balance between what they need and what is better to conserve or to preserve the village. So you have to live doing something. You cannot say always, no, you cannot, <laughs> because they need things. They need, for example, electricity and kitchens and bathroom that they didn't have. So, of course, they need changing, but what type of changes? Okay, so let's talk about this type of architecture. We could be talking about any other type of architecture, and uh, you have a big, very big country, and there are many different situations. Even in the state of Texas, uh, you can find many situations let's make this of an example but you can t just transfer it to some villages or city or town you know okay so this is an architecture <coughs> made as Emila said it is growing uh, in the skirts of, of the mountains to have always light and ventilation and it's an amazing organism because you see this is a, a, a house like a kind of a uh, <coughs> let's say a, an analysis of a house, you will see that this house, although they have masonry, they are based upon the structural pillars. Okay, you can see here the pillars. So the idea is to hold the house with pillars, but these pillars are made of gypsum. So this gypsum that we are not used to see as something useful, only just for rendering, whatever, this is used here as a structure. Wow. That's also wow for us. I mean, when we explain that in Spain, nobody believes it. You have to go there and touch it. And you can see, for example, a 1917 photo of a, of a structure being built with these gypsum pillars and then covered. And then after that, there's the distribution. Just the, the, the Maison of Minot of Le Corbusier at that time. No? They also built with pillars and then slabs. And then uh, you make the distribution. This was more or less the same. 
And all what you see here, all the renderings are gypsum made, uh, also gypsum made. These are, uh, these are uh, walls made with flat stones put like that, as I saw. Very thin, like five, five centimeters, yes? Also with uh, gypsum. Gypsum is a very fast setting also. Right? It, it just blow and then it's like that. Especially if you put a little water, it, 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 it is very, str very strong and uh, you can see here, from this is a house. First floor, it is made of masonry with, uh, uh, with uh, earthen, earth mortar. And then you have the second floor. You can see here some marks. The marks are made, let's see, these are made, uh, are gypsum, okay? But it was covered, and then they put the foam work from inside, and then after that, they put the gypsum and then the flagstone, like that. So it is the only wall I know in the world that you build first the rendering and then the wall, okay? <laughs> because it's against the phone work. And then, this is also with the phone work at one side, and you can see here is thick, uh, and then very thick, okay? I cannot speak very much about that. If not, it will be a whole morning with this. <laughs> Could you let us know like the approximate age some of those, oh, yeah. like, just generally. 200, okay. 300 years. Some of them, till 50 years ago, everybody built like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then uh, cement was, uh, uh, was uh, introduced, and so uh, everything began to change. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you for the question. Go ahead, you have more questions. So this is, these are the, the, the uh, floors that made with a jack arched floors with poor gypsum also. So at least they use just the, 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 the trunks or just the cut beams, the cut, cut doors. These are the, the roofs made with weed, uh, horse hooves as a, <laughs> as a main point. I mean, everything it was useful there. And this is the concept I think we must relearn really again, I think. And for example, these are typical staircases with uh, joists and reed. All the furniture is built in furniture, furniture, kitchen, and so all made with gypsum. Gypsum was very cheap. If you want to uh, fire a lime in a kiln, you need like five days fire, okay? That's very expensive. But gypsum, it's only one day fire. So it, it was a mortar for the poor, for, for the poor. So it's only the churches and the, and the, and the priest uh, houses were land made. Hmm? You can see this is the gypsum, this is the quarries, and then this is the architecture. The architecture had this color because of the, of the clay uh, inserts. Okay? So this is the way they made, they took out the gypsum with the wedges. They built these cylinders. For kilns, you can see one here, one here. <coughs> and then they fire, they put the gypsum inside, they fire for one for one day, especially during the night, because during the night you can control the fire. And it was also like a kind of party, they put potatoes and so on, <laughs> and meat not so much, I and mean, they were poor. And then after that they put the fire uh, gypsum stone, and then with an animal they they grind it. Right. Grind it. Somebody else. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Make it. Right. So, uh, so you can see here where they do it. This is, for example, a big quarry for gypsum in the area. And in fact, half, the uh, eastern half of Spain is a gypsum, uh, is uh, full of gypsum quarries. And, uh, but uh, you can think also, I mean, if you go to Louisiana, that's here around the corner, uh, for example, the, the city hall of Louisiana is gypsum rendered also. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it was made in, uh, I think, in 1780 when Louisiana mm -hmm. was part of Spain. But I mean, the tradition is there. Even with very wet weather, uh, gypsum was used. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have to relearn that, those things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, this is a typical house. These are some essays of restoration, of preservation. Some of them with uh, uh, 
gray cement, uh, maybe not so compatible. Some of them uh, with white cement and uh, color. And you can see a little. Some of them are very, uh, how do you say, well oriented because they they just try to restore. But when you have a masonry wall and it's an old masonry wall and you go pointing obsessively every perimeter, then something changes. It's what what we call like the Disney uh, park effect. <laughs> you, you have a, a real masonry wall, you touch it, you can feel it's real, and then you begin to ch 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 and it, you, you do it with all your love, like that, and then everything changes. It's like like screwing a, what is uh, a tornillo? Screw. Screw, screw, screw in a screw, you, you like that, and then you're not sure that it is fixed, and then you make the last turn, and then it goes all. I mean, <laughs> finished. You cannot do anything. It's finished. I mean, this house is, you cannot, uh, you, you felt, uh, you, you have lost the, the, the character, the atmosphere. So we try to maintain this uh, atmosphere of, uh, of a natural and uh, spontaneity uh, house. Hmm? So. Is yes. that a vegetated roof or was that just from the This roof? one? Up, no, the up above, the, on the upper legs. No, it, it looks like by it's tile. No, it's, it's, it's a tile. Oh, it's because it's on yeah. such a steep slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a tile. Oh. Uh, the vegetable mm -hmm. roof, the vegetable roof. So, uh, what do we mean there? We, we, the students ask us, why don't we have a, a place to, to make a hands-on working on, on this? And, and so we were looking for a house, and, and we saw a house on sale, and we say, okay, if it is not too expensive, we we buy it. And they told us uh, $600 for a house. We said, okay, we buy it. <laughs> we said, okay, we were just expecting maybe it is too expensive, we cannot buy it. So we, we bought it personally because the university didn't want yes. to, to buy it. It was complicated. So we bought it personally. You can see this is gray cement all around because the people there are proud of cement. They say, look, I have cement you don't have. I, I have young. And, in a superior level. No? So we tried to restore it and we made a restoration project and we made some trials using lime mortar. We repaired the roof. Uh, we could explain a lot of this if people have. For example, when we had to restore the, uh, to consolidate the floors to, uh, to have more capacity, a strength and capacity. Uh, we could import a uh, structural from the school of architecture. We have been taught how to use reinforced concrete, and then you just put the the glasses of re reinforced concrete, and you try to repair everything with, with reinforced concrete. But we must think twice if reinforced concrete here is compatible. And in fact, uh, concrete is not very compatible with gypsum, with wood, you know. Okay. So in this case, we uh, were experimenting with gypsum, local gypsum. And we said, okay, yeah. let's repair gypsum with gypsum. It's like like having a kidney uh, implant. I mean, you, you look for the same kidney or same type of. So this was the concept. So we used the local gypsum. We used the local reinforcement that, that was read. We were trying other reinforcement like wool, like uh, spartograss, like uh, we, we I mean, we were looking at the sheep of say, okay, some wool. Of, so we were looking at the things around because it was like an Indian mentality uh, that they said when you have a, an illness in, in, a, in a site, you will find the healing uh, source in, in the site. This is the same concept, no? It's farm to market architecture. So this is the reinforcement. It, it can be like, uh, it can seem like peculiar, but I mean, it was uh, tried in the lab, in the, in the university, and everybody was amazed because we were, I don't know, did you work with megapascals? Are you familiar with that or mm -hmm. not? Yeah. Yes, you can use megapascals. You can do. I mean, we, this uh, gypsum it, it arrived sometimes to 20 or 30 megapascals, so it's over reinforced concrete, mm -hmm. just to, to make you an idea. So. But we didn't use it like the uh, like the normative said. We use it like the answered people of the area said, put so much water and so on. So and though we compare also what happened uh, with every part of the of the of the building.
built inside, structural roofing, partition walls, carpentry, if we restore it or if we make a new building. So we were comparing the price. How much is that and how much is that? And inside all these, we also compare inside the prices where the money was going, whether manpower, machinery, or materials. So first, first conclusion was that uh, restoring or rehabilitating or converting was as much uh, as expensive as making new, as uh, destroying and making new at the maximum. And the second and most important was this, that for example, if we restore, manpower gets most of the money, okay? Machinery more or less remains the same, materials uh, remains very little, and if we make new, most of the money is materials. That means if I take a window like this and I restore it with local craftsmen, most of the money will remain in town, will remain in the village, and won't, won't go out. And if we make new, the money maybe will be the, the, the same, but it will, be, it will go somewhere to Houston or Washington DC or New York or whatever. Money will remain in planet Earth, okay, no problem. <laughs> but uh, what we interest is that to develop local crafts, okay? So another example <coughs> that I will show you a little, it's a preservation work in a very special building. It was the only public building of this village. It's exactly the same village as the house. It is this one with only four inhabitants during the old year and 300 inhabitants during the vacations. So it's a very empty village. So this is the, the building. It is a very normal building from outside. You see it, it's okay, okay, it's a house, nothing special. But what is special is it is the oven here, the school here, and the barber shop here. In these villages, the barber, the barber were, was also the, the doctor, the dentist, <laughs> the, the, the everything, okay? <laughs> so the, the, the most important person in the village. So it's the a building, a public building for everybody in the same building. And it's very interesting because the, the school is just <coughs> up to the oven, so the children were eating during the, the school, and this was the state. So it was exactly the same, like like going back in the history and we were when we entered there we said, Oh my god, that's like a, a, a trip in the, in the history, like a voyage <coughs> in, in the history. So this was the oven, exactly with the same tools and with everything. The last people the person that used it was like 10 years ago and she closed the oven and never came back because she, she died. So it was incredible because it's everything exactly the same. Well, this area is, uh, is for us, is a, a, a trip in time. Uh, for you would be a trip in, in geography, but also in time. I mean, it's also for us. I mean, also yeah, in Spain, it's very rare to find something so peculiar, so well preserved. So this is the oven inside. This is the school. So the school was closed in 1961, and it closes and never open again. So with everything inside, with the maps, with the books, with the, uh, everything, all the tools. And this is the only way. Because the Marshall Plan it was, it was there. We use it as an oil <laughs> And this is the, the, the picture of Franco, the dictator of Spain, that was still there. And he was still young. Not, not still young, in the middle age. So when they closed it, it was everything like this. And, but you can see here, so there were some infiltration from the roof, with water from the roof, movements in the building. So it was quite a challenge for us because we enter there and they say, okay, you have to make the preservation work. So you say, oh my God, if I change something, I can like, like uh, steal the, the soul of this 
building. I have to try to do it without moving so much the things. In so, fact, the people said, hmm. oh, what's a pity? You're going to restore the school. So you can that understand people this, what think about Disney it. This park effect. The, it's yeah. going to be something like... And people were like, oh, I studied there, and now you, you, you change everything. Oh, I'm like, oh, I have not to change. I have to try not to change. This was the, the barber shop. So first of all, we make a catalogation of everything. Absolutely everything. All the elements that we could find inside, the, the furniture and tools and everything, exactly with the same position, because we have to, to work inside, so we have to keep everything in a, in a storage, and then to try to put everything again exactly in the same position. So we make a big catalogation of everything, and then we start. We start from the roof, you know that when you, when you build a building, you never start from the roof, but when you restore a building or you make a preservation work, you have to start from the roof because it's the, the most problem part. Uh, problem spot. So uh, we start restoring. That was only to put again the elements in the right way because with the time everything was moving. So we didn't change nothing, we only reorder everything and put it in the right way. So you can see we had to add the light because if you make a preservation work, yeah, this building mm, didn't have light and water because there was no light and water when it was used. This was the last so field in Spain <coughs> to receive light and water in 2001. Yeah, it was like a lost village in the mountain. But when you make preservation work, you have to adapt, for example, for uh, exit, emergencies, emergency exit, and things like this. So we had to put it, but we try to put it uh, always in, in places where you cannot see. <coughs> so some reinforcements of the, the facade that were moving to the, the, the street. Some restoring that was the, I don't know, the bath, the like the, the toilet mm -hmm. of the children. So we, we restore everything. We put all the old pieces of the, <laughs> of the, the toilet in like a puzzle. And then we make the, the preservation work of this part of the render, rendering. And we could choose to eliminate the old renderings and put a new one, gypsum made or something like this, but we decided to keep it everything and make a consolidation as a painter or something like this, so we find the right uh, mortar to, to do it. We fix everything that you can see, the cracks and so on. And the finished work is this. It's like keeping everything in uh, uh, as it was. This is the wall just repointing, so you can see that you cannot see the repointing really. It's only to fill little gaps, nothing more, not like Fernando was telling before. We also make all the conservation works in the in the windows and doors. Uh, the wooden part, and then we make all the restoration of the what is this? Board. Blackboard. The blackboard. Blackboard. So there were no blackboard because they don't have, didn't have money to, to buy a blackboard. Really. Buy so they only paint a, a, a black rectangular in a, in the wall. And that was the blackboard. So we restore it. Yeah, fixing everything and to make rigatino as a paint. To, to fix everything. We put the light, but we try the light to, to integrate the light in the, in, in the building, so without disturbing with, a lot, with the light. And this is the result after the preservation works, and you can see that it didn't change so much. And when, and in this case, for example, if you remember, there were big, uh, humidity here, 
So we decided to re well, of course, to fix the roof, and after that, to repaint this part. But you can see here, there were the ends of the, the children, and we didn't want to, to change that, because it was like the life of the, of the building, like the soul of the building. So we decided to paint here, and then less and less and less and less and less, <laughs> not to repaint there. <laughs> So this is before and this is after and you can see all the elements exactly in the same in the same position. So this is the work after that, also after, the building after. And what is the most important important thing for us? That when people from the village enter there, they say, Ah, oh, you didn't do nothing. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> It seems that's everything it's like before. <laughs> so we made uh, other buildings like that. All these, we, we make preservation works more or less in the same way. And what is important in these villages is that they, these type of buildings are the monuments there because they don't have any cathedral, any big building. That is the heritage that they have. So it's very important to keep this heritage alive to to conserve the, the culture and the, the identity of these places. The thing is that we could have brought other monuments and so on. Next time we will speak about the Alhambra. We have been working <laughs> the Alhambra in a bit. But we find and we tell our students that if you are able to restore these things, then you're able to restore everything. Let's see. The school, that school, is something very spe special because we have seen several times people entering the school and beginning to cry because it's an it's a, it's a emotional shock. So if you're able to restore a place that's able to, to make cry people, I mean, architecture that makes cry is very <laughs> difficult to find. <laughs> I, only have, I have seen two examples. One is the school. And the other is the Auschwitz uh, camp, in, uh, so it's something very different. So if you're able to cook that, then you're able to do big monuments. Because the monuments, you can treat them back. They defend by themselves. They are big. They, are, they have grandeur. Okay? So we are going to speak now about some examples of a new architecture, also maybe small, but with this philosophy. Just keeping with this uh, same uh, story of the wheel. Uh, this is a, a cemetery in Spain, in an area full of ceramic production, and a very rich family, I think is the richest family in Spain, mm -hmm. the second richest mm -hmm. family in Spain, and big ceramic producers, uh, they say, we want to make the mortuary chapel for the founder of a, of a, of a company. And so they, uh, they say like that, this is, we want a mortuary chapel made with ceramic, okay? And we want a mortuary chapel that would be like the character of my father. That means an open and uh, sheltering people because he was so friendly and so on. Simple, no decoration. We don't want luxury. We want just the 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 bond the the bonding of the of the ceramic would be the only decoration of the. And we say, wow, that sounds wonderful. So, and we had also in the area the traditional tiling. Uh, tile vaulting technique, like the Wasabino technique. Wasabino was born in Valencia, I remind you. So we have still many people who can do it, I mean, hundreds of people who can do it to, to make an idea. Okay? So we began to think about using catenary uh, because if you want to use tile vaulting technique, you, sh you should go follow the, the, the catenary. And uh, these were the first uh, trials. They also were sa said that they didn't want uh, they wanted the mortuary chapel to last for what, 500 years. That means that you have you cannot use uh, concrete because concrete it, uh, it uh, ages and also no metal because it rust. Okay, so it should be only ceramic. Okay, stone, stone ceramic. So this is the this is uh, these are the terms and this should be the, the mortuary chapel. And we were working also with uh, ceramics, very famous ceramics in. In, uh, in the world, I think. He's living in, in Valencia in, 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 a, in a farm. And uh, he was making the pavement. 
this is the man. <laughs> it's amazing when you, this was an amazing, an amazing uh, commission because we began, uh, and I, this, is, this is literally said, we began selecting the clay. And then, then we took the clay to the kiln, and then we select the type of kiln, the, the type of uh, uh, the, the shape of uh, of, uh, of the tile, the width, we uh, also the fuel, the type of fuel, give another uh, one color, another color. It was amazing. We control everything, and they didn't want to use their ceramics because they are a big industry. They, we look for a for a small kiln, manual kiln, and uh, so when we found it, we called them, and we couldn't believe our eyes. I say, say, I sure you don't have any machine. So he was feeling like, no, I don't have a machine. But you should, no machine. No, he was like, oh, the police, or like, <laughs> he was feeling bad. And finally he said, okay, yes, I have one machine. He said, which one? I have the lorry to, to carry the tiles. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. But this was the only machine they had. So these are some uh, renderings of what would be the, this uh, mortuary chapel with a tile vaulting, open, friendly, and sheltering, wherever. And this is the, what we, how we build. So we use a centering. This metal is not a reinforcement, but the centering to keep on with the, with the shape of the curves. This is a first layer is gypsum. Second layer is cement, uh, wax cement. You can see this is an amazing technique. You can do anything with tile walls, literally anything, it holds. If you follow the catenary shape, okay. <laughs> don't try with <laughs> So you can see, this is a man, he's not 80 years old, he's 40 years old, he's, he's probably the best in Spain. We can bring him to you. Benjamin knows him. We have been working with this man also with the, in the Biennale of Architecture in Venice with Benjamin uh, this year. If, if you have time this weekend, you can go to the Biennale in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last, it's the last, no, it's the last, it's the last, I know it's finished. It's finished no, no, last no, no, week, no, no, I think. No, 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 no? it's the 27th of, we no. have like two or three ah, weekends. Ah, 27th of November. <laughs> so you can see here how we were building. After that, we cut the centering and uh, take away. This was mm. uh, taking shape. How long did it take you? Two months. Okay. I mean, it was like one year. But like the actual building, once you had. Okay, yeah, the, the, the building and the, the vault was two months. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, may, I, may I tell the story? Of course. The story of the vault? There's no, uh, there's a shell <laughs> subject, I, I cannot tell you. <laughs> How no. thick is it? What? How thick is it? There are three layers. Of oh, three centimeters. Uh, it is like eight centimeters in, you know, but the, the curves are. No, the only thing is, uh, I can tell you, uh, if you see some similar project uh, in, in the web, okay, mm -hmm. this, this is a 2014 project and uh, someone has uh, taken the idea and transferred it into a, a famous project now. So uh, we were we, before. We did a very small vault in Benvin's construction class Okay, last I don't year. tell anything more. Yes. Just have a look and be think for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, it's like the big fish eating a, a, a small fish and, and we feel a little <laughs> uncomfortable. And the family is also very angry because it's like stealing an, an idea. But you see here, taking shape, this is the first trial with the lights, okay? And uh, there's a, a, a documentary they made on, on this, and we're going to see one, one minute and a half, maybe you can see, if you want, the whole afterwards. This is YouTube.
the year if we want. This is the year of the start. Because we have another, if we have time, if we wanted to show you another project. You, you have it in YouTube, so you can see. If you are in YouTube, <laughs> if you write in YouTube uh, um, Soriano Pantheon, okay. like this, Pantheon Soriano, it, you will find it. Or maybe, maybe you put our names, maybe. In our web website, there's a link also. Ah, yeah. We'll find it. Yeah, yeah, it's not so, so difficult to find. We plan your last project. I so think. if we have time, we have time. Well, some people might have to want to study. Do you guys have to want to class or not yet? Are you okay? Well, the liar needs to go. So uh, I think we can go for another five, five, five minutes. 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 So last project we are showing. So, so this is another type of project completely. And in this case, we well, the name is the garden of memory, and now you will discover why. So there were a, a monastery in one village. It's like one hour north from Valencia, two hours north from Valencia. And this was a, a convent, a monastery from the 16th, 17th, 17th century. So the monastery was placed in the middle of the new part of the village in a very big area. And the major that was constructor also, he decided to destroy the monastery because he wanted to use the land to be big buildings. So it destroyed it. The monastery at that time was not protected, not it listed. 24 hours yeah. before it was going to be protected. So that it Saturday was night. like the weekend before the technician went to protect, it, to list the monastery. So they, they put the lights during the night and, and destroyed everything. So after that, you can see all the, the situation and they destroyed everything. So after that moment, there were big uh, manifestation in, against this protest. this operation. Like, were people protesting? People, protest, people from the village. So they block completely the land and they say, no, you cannot construct nothing here. You have to donate it to the village and use it for public for public space. After 10 years, because they were like fighting legally during 10 or 15 years. After that, it was solved the problem. And the major, the new, well, they changed like three times majors inside and during the time. And the major decided to keep this space for a public garden, to receive it for a public garden. You see, this was the situation before our project was very sad situation with the only part of the church that remains because some buildings were here when they destroyed the monastery so they couldn't destroy this part of the, ch the church and they use it during all this year as a parking, nothing more. So this was the only part and you see that these big buildings were the, the cause of everything. So uh, the, the idea that came from the administration was to recover the memory of this place. That is not easy when you when you have something like this. Which memory is something that is very hard because it's an awful place, abandoned and it's parking. So we try to we we couldn't make the excavation um, before making the project, so we didn't know exactly what was remaining there. But we know that, of course, something mm, remained there. So we try to understand how to use it, the, 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 the traces, and to, with uh, the comparison of the, the plans that, of the building before they destroy, uh, destroy, and to try to keep the only part of the church that remained there, using the church or the, the rest of the church as a public space for a theater or open air theater or something like this, you 
using the cluster and the monastery <coughs> as a park with a cluster in the, in the center and try to recover the old, old entrances of the park, so of the monastery. So try to keep something of the history of this place. <coughs> the idea was something like this. We have some rests and try to integrate it with nature, these rests that we could have. This is some, some ideas, study of the sun with the new uh, trees that we, we will uh, put there. This is the excavation that we could do afterwards, so we find all the traces of the lost monastery. We do it with drones and, uh, and photogrammetry, aerial photogrammetry, to have the exact position of everything. And this was what we find it. So layers and layers and layers of materials from the mon monastery, but was like everything destroyed and layers of materials. So we decided to use this material that were from the monastery but without any construction to rebuild something and to keep the memory, the, the memory there so use was the idea was to reuse the, the material and making something with the memory or the material memory so instead of throwing all this debris to uh, place of uh, in a rubbish. Uh, so we said, why don't we reuse the debris to evoke the disappeared comment? And we have some people who are very well, uh, very good at dry stone uh, building. So we said, take, take the debris, don't take it to the, to the rubbish, and let's uh, remake walls with the debris, with tile, with roof tiles, with whatever. We restore also the, the wall, the remaining wall of the church. And then you could see here how is taking shape this garden of the memory because it's taking all the pieces, all the anonymous pieces, and rebonding them in a dry stone way to make, to evoke the former walls with their own pieces. So we keep, you see, we keep all the, the remains where they were and build something I build a little bit just to have to make a bench, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is the, the garden finish. And you can see the roof tiles, you can see everything here. So it is also a kind of a admonition like don't destroy again. You have it here. I mean it is like to remember. To remember. Are there some pavements here that were still there? So we we keep them and we put new pavements where was needed. This is also a, an old pavement. This is part of the garden. This is a kind of a, uh, a reused debris. In the, so it is a, in this sense very sustainable because we are not contaminating with anything. These are the tombstones reused as a part of, a, uh, of the wall. Oh, this is the date of the monastery, yeah? And it's... Uh, and now the trees are growing, so I mean, uh, this is a photo, very recent photo, but uh, we hope in 10 years this will be much nicer, and now it is uh, every garden, you are, have to be patient to, to make it <laughs> grow. The, the city mayor wanted to, to have everything grow, and say, okay, you have to pay much more money to be in the trees already <laughs> grown up. So I said, no, I don't have so much money, so you, have, you need to, to invest some So, and that was all. Thank you very much for your attention. So we have a, a we can retain a couple of questions if, if, if you want. Yeah. Um, wondering how, let's say someone People want to build in this like, vernacular style. Like, how hard is it to do that considering like new building codes? Like, can you build a new path? You know, like how does that play out? Yeah. Well, you can do it, 
And there's always, even I think in the codes here, in every country codes, there's always, I think so, there's always a little door like saying, you can do other things, I mean, if you show that you can do it, if you make a test, whatever. We always take this little door. Directly we go to the little door. And for the moment, it, I mean, it was okay. I mean, and sometimes this little door, we have made bigger this little door. We are working now with the ministry to make this little door bigger. Because they asked us to make new codes for the runners and new codes. Or, so it is like insisting what many people want to go through this little door, it gains a gate. It becomes a gate. And this is, this is what we are working. It's a kind of a missionary mission. Like yeah, the problem is that in this case, you have to sign for that. Isn't in general, when you make a project, you say, okay, this project is uh, is uh, exactly what the code asks. If you go for the door, you have to say, okay, I'm the responsible for that. So it, it's always difficult that people want it to do it, but you can do it. You have to include in your in, in, in the money, in the, in the budget, the test for the structure or the test that you try to include all in one package. So if the project is more or less big, you can do it. When the Loma Prieta earthquake occurred in San Francisco, California, it was after, not what, 1988 or 89, and the previous major one had been in, in 1908 or 1906. Yeah. So there was a lot of, you know, there were some buildings had been reinforced, but all the, on your map of Spain where you showed all the gypsum sources, are those areas of Spain subject to earthquake or seismic activity? Not as much as Italy, for example, mm -hmm. that we have in front, mm -hmm. but we have some certain uh, seismicity in the south. In the south. Okay. Well, and for example, this this motor chateau mm -hmm. is is thought not only for the wind suction, mm -hmm. because uh, so it's also thought for an earthquake of the south of Spain. Mm -hmm. So we put. Uh, just it was not needed, but just he just to say okay sure. to be very sure that it is not coming a tornado and then and the suction of the wind and then the earthquake all together. <laughs> we put some fiber rods, uh, fiberglass rods, uh, going springing from from the, from the earth, so that the shear moment could be uh, absorbed. But it was just in the case of a, almost a. a, a Texas tornado, so it was very big. Okay. No. Um, I'm just curious. This is kind of an impossible question, so you can just do what you want with it. But I'm just curious. Um, I've been involved a lot here in the U.S. with kind of the natural building movement and more earthen construction and stuff like that. And a lot of people's criticism is always like, "Oh, those don't last. Like it, it will never work." And of, and of course, a that's wrong. And b I think people don't take into account, I really appreciate what you guys said at the beginning about maintenance and kind of the culture of maintenance that went along with a lot of these building techniques. And I guess I'm curious kind of what your vision of the future is or what your, what your idea is of how these kinds of technologies can still exist today when there isn't money or time to maintain them in the same way that they used to or there isn't the culture of like getting together and replastering a wall or something like that. Just well, kind we of are working also in that. Yeah. So, for example, we are working now with the Ministry of Culture uh -huh. of Spain that give us the chance to, to make a study in all Spain to know who, who nowadays could make this type of work. And at the beginning you say, oh, nobody could do it. But it's not. There are a lot of people, they know how to do it, things. The only the only difficulty is that in general they are not well-known people or well-known enterprise, they are in little villages. So, for example, we were uh, telephone everybody and speaking with everybody and visiting, and visiting them and make a recording. Well, you can find it in the, in the website also, and it's quite interesting. And many of them, they say, oh, but everybody know where I am. No, not everybody, everybody in your village, <laughs> but not from another village. So it was like a big listing of names and people and so on. So I think there are a lot of people still with this knowledge, 
the problem is the, the, the link between the people that want to do this type of work mm -hmm. and the people that have the knowledge. So it's to try to find a way to keep in, in touch people and to, to give the possibility to, to try to recover this. Because one of the problems that we have, for example, in Spain, is that people that have manual skills, they didn't, they, they feel like shame because they are low in the social, <laughs> social ranking. So they feel like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm not good, I, that's for poor. And it's very important that the cultural work to, to say them, no, you are important in this society, you are, you, we really need you. So trying to, to speak with them and to, to keep the things. Yeah, like in, in this moment, we, we didn't touch Some <laughs> His style, his style mode builder, I mean, he was working in his village and now has been to Venice to work. They have, he has been called to Cambridge yeah. to make calls in Cambridge. I mean, and he's like, wow, I know all the builders in the village say, hey, I know what to do. I, I, know I also how know how to do it. So, and if you, if you visit this website, uh, well, website, there are lots of links where you can find these and there. And, and also there is one thing, if you build thinking about maintenance, it will be uh, easier for the maintenance. For example, this, uh, this uh, mortuary chapel was thought almost not to have maintenance because the rain has, has washed, uh, washed it away. At the beginning they said, maybe we can paint, and then, then you have to repaint, mm -hmm. and uh, all these things, all these little things. Or for example, yeah, I want to substitute my window, my wooden window for another uh, aluminum window that apparently has no maintenance. But Maybe it has no maintenance, but after 20 years, you just kick it uh, and it's rubbish. <laughs> While a wooden, uh, wooden uh, window with a little maintenance, with a little oil, and you can last 200 years perfectly. Thank you. Um, with the first project that you were talking about, the building that you bought, or no, I'm sorry, the school and the baker's oven, I was curious um, who funded that and what. Is it being used? Is it more of like a shrine? Is it back to its original use? Well, the ministry pay for that, or the administration, the government pay, pay We have pay public investment, that. and you, yeah. in Norway you have private investment. In Europe, everything. Yeah, in general, we use for all these things, it's money from the government. So in this case, it was thought as a museum, because you can use in another way. It was a museum and it's still a museum. And what is interesting that many people from all around, not only from this village that they are poor, so, <laughs> but from other villages and from the cities around, they organize buses and visits and tours to see this type of buildings because it was from the, the Ministry of Tourism. So they give the money and they also try to make these, these like tours and... Was there like a promotion yeah. about it or...? No, but it's and that's something surprising like because you arrive there with a big bus of tourists and saying, oh my god, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there has been people from the United States visiting that school and they say this school pays the whole ticket <laughs> because it, it is so amazing. No? So if you want to join for the workshop, whatever we make every year, we're happy to have you there and then you can see the school. <laughs> yeah, by the way, the workshop there we see an award in when? November, right? This month? In two yeah, weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. There I have here with uh, Charles, uh, with Prince Charles. Prince Charles. Charles has invited wow. us for dinner. Wow. 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 In his house. <laughs> and we you're having lunch with us. So. <laughs> there was one, one question here. There was one more. Yeah, so I have. Yeah. Uh, so I have, I'm from India and I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, local materials being used for construction around uh, the Kutch area. Of, and the, I don't know if you've heard of it, but they usually use local materials. But the major problem that we are facing right now that the preservation sector is facing is because of craftspeople. 
if there are no craftspeople who know how to do that kind of construction anymore because everybody is now trained in concrete buildings or uh, in doing just simple carpentry. No one knows how to do wood carvings, no one knows how to do plaster work, no one knows how to make simple uh, mud construction. Did you really face such kind of oh, yes. problems? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah of no manpower because in re you said when you so showed that chart you said that the manpower required the most amount of money right so yeah but this is good because when people realize that for some during the, the crisis eight year crisis in spain the people these craftsmen who knew how to repair that how to repair that they didn't stop they continue working so they say hey i want also so i mean so we have been witness at our age, our more or less young age, <laughs> <laughs> and let's say we have uh, uh, discovered in these last 20 years how you you pass from a hopeless situation to uh, something. So you can you can help and you can do it. And, and you can do it everybody. And that's very important. To the point that if now everybody asks for that and, and do it and find the people do it, say, no, you're, you're good, please, do it. And do it like this, like that. Everybody's working the same way. I think we can to find a little. <laughs> five years ago, the Ministry of Culture called us, and we have been have been advising how to recover that. For so example, now we have proposed them, and we are working now for the curricula of the kids between eight to ten years mm -hmm. to make a, some activities to sensitize them. Mm -hmm with traditional architecture, vernacular architecture, so have this in mind. So there's a lot we can do as individuals and we, we some of them we work on that. We, we can do it here in India. In so do you have state. training programs for crafts people? As we have training programs that? from or 3 to 90 everybody. years old. Mm -hmm. Because we are trying to work in, uh, for example, in technician, like mm -hmm. architects or engineer and so on, but you cannot work only in this part. Mm -hmm. You need to work in craftsmen, and you need to work in people and in children, because you have to change the mentality. So it's something that it's a little bit big work and very long way work. Uh, we are you cannot find the year, result in three years. Next year we're beginning with a hands-on mm -hmm. master on traditional egg techniques. So you come to Spain, okay. you learn how to build rammers, adobe, or routing technique, and mm -hmm. it's fun. We have made some some experiences, and people like it so much. They why don't you make that in, in, in the shape of a master? So we have organized that. So it's a master for intellectual people to <laughs> regain the ability of working with hands. And so, and so you can you can do it. You can order. You can command. You can design better how to do things if you have tried with your hands. Mm -hmm. So you are all invited. <laughs> one, we have one more question here, and I think we have to wrap it up. I was curious if you're working with the World Monuments Fund or any of the, the groups in the United States. Norma Barbacci is from the World Monuments Fund in Manhattan, and I know Spain is part of her territory, but have you worked with her or met her? We have been mm -hmm. advisors of yeah. some uh, decades of the uh, World Monuments Fund, but okay. we haven't received a permission to restore anything. We're happy to do it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would like to introduce you to her because yeah. years ago the, uh, there was a special international conference in Spain in, in 1992 mm -hmm. um, and she helped facilitate that and they had people from all over the world come and speak so mm -hmm. you may want to be in touch with them. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that we already run out of time, but thank you very much. Thank you very much. I thank you all of you for being here, and yeah, see you in the next one.